Hey guys, it's Ann here from Pearson Bell at Home on the Pink Tour Facebook page. And we're finishing up this chest that we've been working on the last two weeks. Um, when you hop on, tell us where you're watching from. We're located in Spring, Texas. Um, but tell us where you're watching from and um, throw us a like down below, share as well. Um, what we did with this piece already, we, we painted it with Italian ivory, and then we took the raven black glaze, Ooh. and hopefully, let me see if we can get our network hang tight. All right, so hopefully we haven't lost yet or too bad. All right, <clears throat> like I said, Anne from Pearson Belt Home, live on the Paint Couture page, and uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Again, we painted this in Italian ivory. We started that and we went over it with the Raven Black Glaze. And that's where you get this totally, completely different look on it. Today we're going to be finishing her up. We're putting on a transfer. Um, it is the lovely script transfer uh, by Prima. And we'll be top coating her in flat top coat. And if you've used the flat top coat from Paint Couture, it has more of an eggshell finish. It's not quite totally dead flat. If you want a dead flat look, just go with dead flat. If you want a little more sheen, go with satin. Satin's gonna be your most durable finish. Um, I tend to like the flat because it's a right, nice happy medium for me. So we'll go ahead and get started on our transfer. Now, this transfer, I'm gonna show you the back end here. What I love about the Prima transfers, they do tell you kind of the dimensions, what's going on here. Now this one was going to be too long for this piece, just way too long. So I had to do some measuring, um, otherwise we were going to lose all of it down at the bottom, and I'll show you that in a GIF. But I pre-measured and I cut off the top. It doesn't lose anything on the design, but just slapping it on there wasn't going to quite work. So you do need to measure your piece and make sure it's gonna fit and make adjustments while you're putting it on or before you put it on to make sure that you have a great look and everything is centered and everything's gonna work in your piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and, we've already got the middle part done. So I'm gonna move a little bit closer here. And we're gonna go down just a bit there. So you're gonna see more of the piece in action. So this has already been done completely right here in the middle. So I did start in the middle, like I said, measured, measured twice, measured three times. I don't want to mess it up. Um, again, cut off, I needed 19, about 19 and a half inches. So I cut off the top, um, measured here to get my middle. We were 18 and a quarter to get my middle. And I actually just folded my transfer just to get a little dent to get my exact middle. Uh, and then I went ahead and placed it on there. So. We're gonna go ahead and show you how to apply it. I've already got this top part done, kind of cheated. But I gotta tell you guys something. I poo-pooed this design tool, right? This transfer tool. I was like, oh, I've got the stick that comes with the box. That's fine, y'all. This is a game changer. If you don't have this, go get you one. I, I'm telling you, I, I resisted for a long time. Uh, we used this in one of my classes about a week ago and it's fabulous. So I tend to like the smaller edge and you've got your transfer on. Again, we just peel the backing off and I'll show you that process here on this side. So don't worry, you'll get to see all the action. Um, and I do have it taped here to make sure it doesn't come off. And I'm just gonna gently go over it, firm pressure. And we're gonna go over this. Now see here, I have a split. This is where my drawer opens and closes. So I do have a little knife. I use a little auto lock knife. And what I like about these, let me see if I can get it in there. See those little blades will break off. I don't know if you can see that. I prefer this because I can break off and have a fresh blade without having to change out the blade. And now you want a nice sharp blade. We've only been using this one to cut the transfer because I don't want to use anything that I've been cutting paper boxes with because it's going to drag on my piece. And you want it to be as precise as possible. So we're just going to go ahead and trim this right here. And we're using the drawer as our guide. All right, so that's trimmed. So I'm going to go back to 
burnishing this on my piece. And this is, a, I have it, this is the first time I've done a gold transfer with Prima. And it's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start to pull this back. All right, if you guys caught my video on my page of doing the Lazy Susans, we had a little bit of a, you know, it took a lot of time to get that transfer off and onto the, uh, to the Lazy Susan itself. So this is much quicker, much faster. Uh, and I would say it's gonna be way easier for you guys. Like I said, for me, it's a game changer. Just being a little stubborn there. All right. And you'll see all the halo. I see them. I don't know if you guys can see the haloing on this. Oh, good. I think you can. So we'll show you how to fix that. So never worry. This is, like I said, going pretty easy. Now, for you at home doing it, I would say lay your piece on, on its back. It's just easier. I didn't do that because it would be a really awkward camera position for you. So I get to be the one in an awkward position of applying this. But like I said, usually if you can, I prefer to flip my pieces on their back. So gravity can kind of help you with this because otherwise this can get away from you and you don't want that to happen. All right, let's see. Voila, done. All right, so now what we are gonna do now, okay, so just so you know, these are like huge. They're like three by six uh, finishing pads. I sell them in my shop. You can probably get them all over. You can use a rag. I cut them up tiny. So what I'm gonna do now, I, I'm thinking you guys can see all of this halo in here, all this kind of hazy little haziness. So I'm gonna start in the middle. Now again, you can use a lint free cloth a cloth you can use your finger I warn you on your finger because sometimes I've lifted my transfer and it's all over my hands so I typically use these and just kind of push it from the inside going out you don't want to roll it in because you can accidentally roll your transfer so start from the inside of your piece and go out you go all the way out <clears throat> And there's where our hardware hole is going to be. I'm just going to kind of mush it in there. So we're not going to need that. And that's going to go away once I put my hardware back. Okay. And don't be afraid to give it some pressure. You're not going to ruin the piece. This is not like sandpaper. It's not that rough. It's, so I said, like, if you have a finishing pad, if not, you can use, uh, like I said, a rag or towels, just something that's not a, super abrasive. Okay, and you're just gonna rub that, all those halos out. And you're just making sure also you don't have any air bubbles. If you have air bubbles in your transfer, when you put your clear coat, as your clear coat dries, what happens is it's gonna pull on those bubbles and pop that transfer right open. So you don't want that to happen. Just gonna poke that, there we go. There's our little knob handle hole there. We've got another one down there. All right. Okay. I'll do a little extra right there to get that little bit off. And that'll go away when we put our clear coat on it. It's just the overlap of the, of the um, transfers when you put them together. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep on moving here. So I'm going to take my little knife and I'm going to cut this one. And they do stick pretty well to the piece. Let's see. I like to get that as close as possible. All right. And this one's just gonna be on this little lip or that divider. Okay, I'm gonna push that underneath. 
Get this final swirls over here. All right, and don't be afraid if you pull your transfer and it come, it cracks or you split it, no big deal, just lay it back down and keep rubbing. And you know what, if you ruin it, like if you tear it and it's not lined up, no big deal, just then get the sandpaper out, do a distress all over, make it look like it's supposed to be that way. You don't wanna do that much work and then just feel like you've ruined the whole piece. Don't, don't throw it out. There's always ways to salvage it. I had a piece that was, the drawers had a, I guess, break in it, where it was kind of divoted out. Well, the transfer is not going to um, go in that divot. So I had to hand paint uh, the transfer pieces. So it was floral, so that was easy to do. So you could just totally kind of blend that in. So you can always blend with your brush um, and paint to make it look like it's supposed to be there. All right, so this one's kind of tough because it's down here, and like I said, I'm in a little bit of an awkward position. I'm gonna cut that, and that's pretty much all I need to cut on that one. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. <clears throat> so, like, this is super easy, guys. So, you're seeing me do this. You feel pretty confident you could do it, right? I, I think you can. The worst part is you're not trying, so definitely give it a try. The worst thing that can happen is you mess it up and it's just a transfer, so not a big deal. You could take it off, you could sand it off, or make it look like it's meant to be that way. So never be afraid of the transfers. Okay. There's more in life to be worried about, so. And no, I don't seal my piece before I do my transfers. I do them right on the paint, and in this case, over the glaze. And if you notice a little depth to the glaze, I did go back and add a little dry brushing. So if you see it here on the edges, has a little more pop of a lighter color. That's the Italian ivory. I just went back and dry brushed. So you can layer your paints and your glazes the point is just have fun and enjoy the process. So you could totally have been done at just putting the Italian ivory on it and you could have called it a day for sure. Okay, we're gonna take this tape off because it's in my way. Oop, see a little gold there. All right. A lot of times for me, the pieces that have more lettering, oops, more lettering, more words on it can be a little more finicky. Little edge right there. Just give it a little more pressure and just kind of peel it slow. And you want to make sure you don't want to go over what you've already done because you'll scratch up your current piece. Oh, there we go. Y'all, if I was doing this with a stick, I'd be here all day. All right, this has got a little piece down here at the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and, and take that without cutting that. All right. So that's pretty much done. Let's go ahead and burnish this out so we don't have um, get that little hole. we go and that's where we're gonna have our hardware our hardware is interesting it is original to the piece it was old and worn I went ahead and cleaned it up and did some gilding waxes on that so that's gonna be really pretty they're gonna really pop super excited so I can't wait can't wait till you guys get to see the whole piece this actually has a mirror that goes with it I took it down today because I was a little worried you know, doing all this, I might make that mirror want to come off. It would totally be my luck. And it's it's old and patinaed beautifully. And I would be super duper sad if I broke it. So it's, 
I moved it for now so we can work on this piece. All right, so I'm going to burnish that. Just get it all those little ridges and crannies and nooks. And again, you're doing this so you get all the air bubbles out. If you leave the air bubbles in, your transfer will not stay on. It'll pop off, especially when you put your clear coat. All right, boom, that part's done. All right, so let me show you the agonizing part, not really, of this side. We're gonna kind of roll you a little bit here and go down there. All right, so I need to move a little closer to it. So I'm a little far. I need a little rolling stool. It's on my list to, to get. All right, so this is already pre-cut and we'll use these parts. They look like little leaves, so I may put them on this piece. I can use them on another piece. So always save what you didn't use for other pieces. You may have a project you wanna put them on, embellish something else, so it's not a huge deal that if you don't use them all on this piece, you can use them on other pieces. And it's not important. It's not an end all be all that you find a perfect size chest to fit one of these on. You can simply trim it up just by looking at the pieces. You know, I sit here and I, you know, I have, go back and forth with your friends. You know, Dustin, if you guys, I'm sure you all know Dustin. Um, I go back and forth and I'm like, hey, should we cut it off right here? And you know, he's like, yeah. So chat with your friends, chat with us. We'll help you out. All right. So when I take this off the backing, okay, so this is on the backing. There's nothing sticky right now about it, but once you take it off the backing, be ready. Don't, uh, don't stick it to yourself. It does stick really well to yourself and it does stick really well to glass. So be careful. All right, so we're gonna take this and line it up. So I'm gonna line it up. Here. and you can touch the parts that are not I don't know if you guys can see it so see all of the halo -y parts you don't want to touch that you don't want to touch the design because it'll stick to you all right if I can get it to bend there we go all right so I just need to line this up and you're gonna get the back of me for right now while I try to line this up so I want to make sure we get it nice and perfect because there's lots of parts that will show I didn't line it up well so Okay, this is the part I usually don't breathe at all while I'm putting it on. All right, so now I've got it on there. I'm just going to kind of lightly press on the piece. And you notice I'm only taping on this side. I'm not going to tape on the side. I don't want to get any tape on the current side that I've already done because it will pull off your transfer. All right, so now we've got that all on there. We're just going to go ahead and cut our parts. I always cut it on the piece because if you try to trim it this part before you get to the piece, you're inevitably something's going to go wrong. So I just trim it as I go. And I do trim it because it's really, really hard to try to do it without trimming it. You certainly can, but you get these little parts in here, which I just put my little tool in to make sure I get those off. So it kind of curves on this. So you'll see that a little bit and it just kind of continues with the, uh, the transfer. All right, Let's see where we are on this. I feel like I'm going backwards on that. Okay, I gotta get that on there. Okay, so that one's on. So we're trucking right along. And I'm telling you, this is my new favorite tool. Aside from my angle brushes, this is it. All right, so I'm gonna get that kind of burnished on. We're gonna trim that off again. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay. 
right, this one gets a little bit precarious there. It's a little tight on the drawer. And I always use blue painter's tape. Uh, use any kind of painter's tape. It could be blue, it could be purple, it could be orange, whatever color it is. But uh, your tape does make a difference. Um, we use the ones for, that one's for sharp lines. We also have the delicate surface. It's just to make sure you don't pull your paint. I don't have any worry about it pulling my paint at this point. I mean, it's been sitting here for about a week, so. Feel pretty confident it's not gonna pull my paint off. Sometimes I've done um, painting projects where I put the tape on too quick and like the same day or her, you know, the same hour. Sometimes it's just a little too wet, so. And if your blue tape is a little too sticky, just put it on your jeans and then pull it off. That way it gets a little, uh, not quite as sticky. Okay, I don't know about you guys. Are you guys holding your breath out there as I pull this off? Okay, all right, there we go. And let me get the rest of this cut off because it was really hard to get this guy cut because that's a really tight, really, really tight joint with my piece and I don't want to scratch my finish. Come on, where are you at? Okay, there we go. It's getting a little bit of a booger here. If I get that all the way off, we'll just cut it. There we go. All right, so we're just going to trim that so it's not in my way. I don't need a huge piece in the way. All right. So we get this little side right here. And this drawer doesn't quite sit as well as the rest, and that's okay. Like I said, she's an oldie. Okay. Get close to that edge. There we go. All right. Like I said, I don't have tape on that. It's just, it will, it sticks very well to surface you're working on once you got it pressed on. So you always want to make sure you are ready to go. If you guys have any questions, just drop them down in the box or in the comment box. Okay. All right, so just really this one panel to go, but there's not any um, more of the, the design down at the bottom. So let's get this one on there. Pop her out a little bit. Okay, get that curve right there. And whatever surface you're working on, you can, like I said before, you could totally flip this guy on its back so it's a little bit easier for you to use. Let's see if that goes. Nope, yep, that's it right there. So let gravity work for you. Can be daring like I am right now. You can leave it set up. There's some kind of pieces like a big giant armoire. Obviously, you're not going to be rolling that on its back. Uh, so then just use your painter's tape to help you get it on there. All right, let's see.
we're going. We're trucking along here. We're just going to finish that right up. Oop, let's see. Oh, that's from the hole there. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to burnish that. Alrighty. Put this tape off. Send my way. Alright, let's get this, just this little swoop right here, and then we'll make sure we burnish it all on, and then we're ready to do our top coat. Alright, and how many of you already tried any of the couture glazes? Like, drop it down in the comments, how many of you have tried out the couture glazes? How many of you are going for the Raven Black? That completely changed the look of Italian ivory. So let me know what your favorite glaze is and if you've used them yet. If you haven't, what's stopping you? All right, so I've got my little holes where my hardware's going, so I'm just gonna kind of poke those out. Okay, and this is really old hardware, so it does have an um, interesting little the back plate, you have this goes through the back and it secures inside the drawer, but then you have this little back plate has a little screw here that will attach to the drawer. So it keeps this from uh, rotating on you, which is pretty clever. I like it. So I'm gonna take my finishing pad here that I've cut up and I'm gonna go from, work myself from the inside and work out. Cause you don't wanna roll your transfer, you'll roll it right off. And you don't want that to happen. Okay, we're just going to burnish all those air bubbles out. Okay. Working from the inside out. And you make sure you get all those little letters. Because each one of those has its own, there's its own little part. So sometimes when you have some of the florals, it's like one big transfer. This is a big transfer, but there's a lot of blank space. So where you have some of the other bigger ones, you'll have full transfers all over. This one has got the bits and parts and you've got some breakup in here. So you really wanna make sure you work all of each part. Get that all worked out. a little bit there like I said if you make a boo-boo no big deal just make it look like it was supposed to be there you can even dry brush over it I mean really just embrace embrace what happens all right so I'm gonna push that back in yeah I'm gonna see that right there okay this one's got a lot of little swirls, lots of little patterns of leaves. Go, getting all of that on there. So very quick transformation. You do spend a little bit of time. You wanna make sure that you wanna select the piece based on the style. We wanted to glam this up. It's very pretty we wanted to add a little glam to this piece so you want to just uh, pick your style you want to make sure it's appropriate for your piece uh, you also want to look for the scale like this one like I said it was going to be a little too tall but just trimming off a little bit off the top wasn't detrimental to me right there so like I said these could be used down here if I wanted I'm probably going to use them on something else that may want to be may want to have a gilded look And we do, since we do classes, we may have somebody wants to play with the transfer how it works. So they can always use those parts. So not a big deal to us. Okay, I'm getting that, just that little bit of a transfer overlap right there. Just get that off. I just rub it really consistent and firm. 
until it comes off. Okay. Just make sure no air bubbles. That is number one. Because like I said, if you have air bubbles in your transfer, once you seal it, it's going to pull it apart. <clears throat> and you would be sad to do all that work. And then I'm going to get this little overlap here. Okay. All right. Okay. Look. Check it out. Look, we're done. We're done with the transfer. Nice and beautiful. She's all on there. We made sure she's got all the uh, bubbles burnished out. So nothing to give us any surprises on it later. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put, we'll go ahead and start our top coat here. I won't make you watch the whole part of me doing the entire piece, but we're just gonna top coat this front so you can see how that goes on and just a little bit about the top coats. My favorite top coat brush, and I keep the same brush for top coats, so there's no paint happening with this brush. This is my Zebra Palm Pro. It is an extension of your hand. So I like it because it's thin here. It's not gonna glop off too much clear coat on my piece, so it gets a nice evenness on it. I like it because it does fit in my hand, and I don't like a big, clunky brush with a big handle that's going to get in my way. Um, sometimes I might be painting inside of a box or top coating inside of a box and it's just going to be in the way. So I want to make sure that this is easy so this stays out of the way. Again, use the same brush for all your top coats. Let's say you painted red, you don't want to use a brush you painted red because it will, I've noticed the reds and sometimes greens will stain your brush. So you don't want that colorant to come off on your top coat. So always have a top coat brush. You can write on their top coat or what have you. I just always use the Palm Pros for my top coat. And I always use the stubby handle for my painting. So we're using the flat top coat by Paint Couture. And like I said, it is a more of an eggshell finish is what I'll call that. Um, it's not quite flat flat. If you want flat flat, you would go with dead flat. All right, so what I'm going to do, so do not contaminate when you don't want to contaminate your clear coat. You do want to stir it to make sure you get all of the settlement, everything, all of your sheen, everything all mixed together. So always stir, never shake. If you shake your top coat, when you apply it on, you're going to have air bubbles in it and it's going to leave what we call orange peel on your piece. And you don't want that because if you do get orange peel on your piece, you'd have to kind of sand that smooth and then reapply your top coat. And you guys know I don't like to do all that kind of extra stuff. I want my stuff to work. So if you do shake it, you forget. Maybe your kids are helping and they shake it up. Just let it sit for about 30 minutes and then stir and then use it. And like I said, we're gonna pour out what we're gonna use today so we don't want to contaminate it. You always should pour out your clear coats into another container. Just pour out what you're going to be working with. Okay. Okay. We're almost out of that one. All right. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try not to get this all over me either. This is a weird position for me to paint on. Okay, and just like you're painting, you're not gonna overwork your top coat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start here at the top up here. Go all the way across. And then I'm gonna come here. And top coats can be a little bit tricky if you're trying to see. where you put it, because this is very clear on the top coat. Like I said, we're putting very thin coats on. I'm gonna go all the way across and pull it here. I 
And I don't know if you guys remember this piece. When we first started, we realized we were gonna have a lot of tannin bleed. So what we did was actually sealed her first with the flat to prevent that from happening. Because we didn't, let's say, let's pretend we didn't have any stain blocking primer. Okay. All right, so see, this is very easy, guys. So I do like to put a light touch here on this portion. I'm not getting it on the drawer yet. Just doing this right here. So I like those sections. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this. Now the florally may be a little bit of a challenge. Let's see if I got that on there. Like I said, this is so clear, it goes on clear, and it's sometimes kind of hard. So if you just kind of tilt, look at it, make sure you got your coverage all over. I always say if you miss a spot, not a big deal. Just go back over it when it's dry. When your second coat, you'll catch it. But this is my favorite top coat, streak-free, brush-free, levels out really nicely, and it has, like I said, a nice, soft, eggshell finish, so it's not super-duper flat. And we have loads of brushes, so if you want a particular brush that does these skinny, weird, like, angular spots, we have some of those brushes as well. Okay, we're going to get that under here. It's just like a little molding piece. All right. Yes, I make sound effects when I'm painting, y'all. All right, so now we're going to get this. I don't know if you guys can see it down here. This right here has got the floral on it. So it is, could be prone to dripping if you put too much. So we're just gonna kinda get it in there. So you may have to massage it in a bit. And I am going a little bit off the, what I normally would tell you is go with the grain, but I'm trying to get it in those grooves. So then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna just pull it all the way back. Okay, so I don't want anything to drip. So I got it in there and then I pulled it back. So I'm gonna do the same thing going down here. So I'm kind of like just getting that, that top coat in those grooves. It's kind of kind of hard. There's deep carving on this piece. So once we have it in there, I'm just kind of work it, work it out. And brush it out. If we leave too much in there, it will cause a drip. It'll show up later. We don't want that to happen. Okay, go ahead and pull that. That's a little drippy. A little extra in there. All right. Okay. And always look at all the angles of your piece. So sometimes you may have to get up, change your position, look at everything and see if you've got it all. All right, I'm going to show you one more. This part might be kind of gnarly to get into. So this will be right here. So hopefully you guys can see. I'm trying to get close without dropping the camera. All right, so we're going to do those little parts right there. Also, I'm going to get this real quick right here. All right. So we're going to get this. This you're going to have to kind of stipple in just a little. And just like we did on the roses or the floral at the bottom, just kind of pull it down. So this one has kind of grooves going both uh, horizontal and vertical, so it can be a little gnarly to get. Just kind of work that in there. <clears throat> there we go. So I'm going to get... And I'll probably pull the drawer. Well, I am going to pull the drawers out because I want to make sure I get the uh, tops of the drawers to make sure that we. So we basically want to protect our piece. We don't want it to to get nicked or scratched with a lot of use because this is going to be a piece 
it is a chest with a mirror so it could um, very well go into a bedroom and get a lot of use in a bedroom it can get a lot of use as a coffee bar really however you want to use it is there any traditional ways we really have to use furniture these days eh, I don't think so okay so we're gonna get that all in there get the excess off okay do it nice like that so super easy y'all that is the flat we'll have her totally finished up for you uh, hopefully hopefully it's for tomorrow and I can photograph her with her mirror in it is a very cool mirror like I said it is patinaed um, from age not from force so that's gonna be really fun to show you guys and um, so you can kind of see we also have the same thing happening here at the gallery it has the floral and it has kind of like a groove here and then we've got that kind of diamond argyle look here so this is, this piece had a lot going on with it we'll also do the clear coat on the top and the sides and that's it on her so if you guys are looking for the paint chair products look on the paint chair website for your local retailer of course you can order from us our link is in the comments we do give you free shipping with fifty dollars in any paint product that is in the u.s and standard shipping if you want it rushed it costs you more uh, and that's pretty much it catch dustin on sundays can't wait to see what he's got up his sleeve this sunday coming up and you know we're gonna be doing some kind of thing with the pumpkins, cause I kinda challenged Justin with the pumpkin challenge. So we'll have the pumpkin off sometime in September or uh, sometime this month. Um, we've got our pumpkins ordered, so as soon as I get in, we'll start painting them and that will be alive for you guys. So I can't wait. So I've gotta bring it on, I gotta bring my best, cause I gotta try to beat Dustin on who has the best pumpkin. So. Guys, y'all have a great week. Happy painting.